you going in soon and don't know what to do, you're scared, you're not the toughest guy, this is 12 tips of advice that can help anyone in their first few days in jail. Stay tuned for a great video. The new Matt Clark. Good, Matt Clark here at the new Matt Clark. How are each and every one of you doing on this amazing Sunday? I'm doing great, my girl's doing great. I hope you're doing great. I hope you're having a great weekend. If you could please hit that like button, subscribe button, and that bell notification button so you get all my videos when they're new. If you could share with somebody on social media, help spread the message, help spread the word, that'd be amazing. And there's a PayPal option if you'd like to donate, help support the channel. The link is in the description of most of my videos. So today, we're gonna talk about 12 tips that'll help anybody when they're starting a jail bit, a provincial jail bit. So first time in, new fish. I've been getting asked this question a lot. If I'm weak, if I'm feeble, if I can't defend myself, what do I do if I have to go to jail? Well, first off, don't go to jail. If you are a weak, feeble person, jail is not the lifestyle for you or the place for you, neither is prison, so I would suggest turning your life around and not going at all because it is impossible to avoid confrontation at all time, especially if you're doing a long bit. Eventually, you're going to rub somebody the wrong way and that could lead to a fight and you never know. If you look weak, sometimes somebody might try to, to bully you or take advantage of you and you have to be prepared to stand up for your food and your pride and respect. At some point, you have to. If not, you'll be food. People will take advantage of you people will smell blood. So these 12 tips will help anybody. I guarantee if you follow these 12 things, when you first start, you're not gonna have many issues at all. Now, obviously, if you're just going in and you know you're going in, like you're on a bail and you're going for a sentencing after, or uh, uh, you, you know you're gonna get found guilty at trial and you know you're gonna go in, take money with you, uh, that's about all that you can do when you're going to provincial to set yourself up as best as possible. You need commissary. It carries you. It gives you extra food because there's not enough food. So that is the one thing I could tell you before you're going in that could help you uh, do your time better. Now, these 12 tips, follow them. You'll probably be okay. Number 12, read the rules. Don't feel like it's a punk off. Don't feel like it's a disrespect. It is what it is. Every person that walks on that range that's not a veteran that people don't know through and through is going to read the rules. And if you don't, if you feel like you can just disregard that, that gives people an excuse to come for you, with you, make your life more difficult. So just read the rules. Number 12 on my list, read the rules. Now, number 11 is take a shower before anything and everything. Now, first you read the rules. Second thing you do, Go right to the shower. Don't try and touch a phone. Don't try and touch cards. Don't try and shake anybody's hands. Go right to the shower. When you're in the shower, wear one pair of boxers at all times. Nobody wants to see you nude. Nobody wants to see your junk and it will create problems for you. If you don't have extra boxers, when you go to the cleaner or the quarter man, say, I need to wear my boxers in the showers, but I only have one pair. Is there any way I could get another pair or two? And they'll find it on the block for you, unless they look at you like a total and they're probably just gonna fly you off the range anyways. But number 11, make sure you take a shower. You know, cleanliness is godliness. And in prison, funny enough, people are crazy clean. People on the street that are smoking boulders, sleeping on a piece of cardboard downtown Toronto, are scrubbing and buffing themselves spotless. This is how it is inside, and it can create issues for you if you're a dirtbag. It just can. So number 11, take a goddamn shower. Number 10 on this list is ask to use the phone. No ifs, ands, or buts. There is no more fights for any reason than the phone in provincial, except for maybe for food, but the phone is right up there. Nobody cares you have to call a lawyer. Nobody cares that your mom or your girl hasn't heard for you. Nobody cares. 
One thing that there isn't in prison is a whole lot of empathy, especially for somebody on their first day in. Once you get to know people, there might be a little bit of that empathy, empathy there for you, but first day, not so much. So ask. You don't touch a phone that's hanging, and just don't touch a phone without asking. It's the first and quickest way to get yourself a smack in the face. I have seen a bunch of people get smacked, and I'm not talking about punks. This leads to fights, but leads to smacks nonetheless. So just ask. It's not a punk off thing. You're new on the block. You need to earn your keep and your respect. And that's why on this list, number 10 is ask to use the phone. Now, number nine on this list is never just speak to the guards. Never do it. Don't go bang on the door and ask for this or ask for that. You are new. People are going to see that as fishy. You could see guys on the block that do nothing but talk to the feds. And they're still going to look at you like you're fishy because you're new. There's a certain boundary that doesn't get crossed. And typically people that are new don't know that boundary. And, you know, a lot of times, like I said, people are looking for a reason to create drama, create fun and excitement. And you could be that excitement if you push the wrong buttons and you do the wrong things. So if you need something, don't go to the COs. Go to the quarter man or the server on the block or somebody that you know and ask them how they can get these things and eventually you'll get it. it. It may not happen like this, like you want it, but this is a fact of life in jail and in prison and there's no guarantee you ask the guards you're going to get it right away anyways. It's most likely you're not. So just go through somebody on your block and tell people know you, respect you, and trust that you're not going to be snitching or talking to those feds. Stay away from them. So number nine, don't just walk up and start talking to the feds. Ask somebody on your block who's been there and knows the ropes and they'll help you. So number eight on my list of tips that could help anybody is always wash after using the wash your hands. Doesn't matter number one, doesn't matter number two, wash your hands. It's easy to forget. Sometimes Guys forget because the, the, the pisser or the crapper is here and the sink's over there. And a lot of the time, guys will try to slide out. Happens all the time. Guarantee you somebody is watching you, especially if you're new. Every single time you go and use that back urinal, there's going to be somebody on that block watching you, waiting for you to slip up and looking for a reason to start drama. Uh, the one thing about jail is you're in a fishbowl. It is boring as hell. There's never really any excitement except for when there's violence or fights or drugs come in, right? And chances are, if you're new, you're not going to be involved in any of the drugs. So you may be involved in some fights. Sometimes they have things like Saturday night fights or Friday night fights where they'll put two new guys on the block against each other and make them scrap. You know, it's always up to you whether you want to be that soldier. Me personally, I'm not nobody's uh, court jester. I'm not fighting for nobody, but that could also lead to a fight. So uh, that decision has to be made by you in the moment, but it happens. So uh, just wash your hands. It's gross anyways, you know. If you're going to go use the pisser or the crapper, it's nasty in a dirty prison or a dirty jail that's already filthy enough. Just wash your hands. Don't spread germs. Don't do none of that at number eight. Wash your goddamn hands after using the bathroom. It just, it just is what it is, man. You don't want trouble? Avoid it. Avoid it at all costs. So, <clears throat> number seven on my list, and this is super important and something that people don't really realize until they get into the joint, is don't reach over anybody's food. Qu quickest way to get a slap in the face, a punch in the head. Uh, I've seen guys get bounced off ranges for it. Not for one time, but for multiple infractions, eventually they end up getting smacked. It is disgusting, your armpits, your hairs, whatever, falling into people's food. Like I said, in prison, there's this godliness is next, or cleanliness is godliness mantra. Everybody tries to be as clean as possible, despite the fact a lot of them aren't clean in the street. But inside, people don't want to be ridiculed for being a dirtbag, so everybody typically is clean. And if you're not, guess what's going to happen? Wapa, wapa, wapa. So just don't reach over anybody's food. 
common sense, just don't. You know, uh, I, I, you know, this rule is not as big as it was when I first started doing time. The first time I did adult time in the West Attention, this and not washing your hands are are literally like the two things that people get smacked the most for. Uh, maybe leaving suds, soap suds in the in the shower or in the sink. Little things like that can lead to trouble. So just avoid it. Don't reach over anybody's food. Number six on my list is don't whistle and ever. Just don't do it. How many people really walk around whistling in the street, whistling in the community? It doesn't matter. You might you might get a warning if you get caught whistling. You know, you see a lot of guys. They come in, they don't really realize they're new, and they start whistling without even having any idea, sometimes even subconsciously, and guys will trip right away, call you a loon, call you a bird, say something that's going to trigger you to want to fight and put you in a situation when really and truly just don't whistle. It has a lot of meaning inside. It stands for something that you don't really know or understand. And what you do need to understand is it's not accepted in any jail or prison in Canada. Point, period. So don't do it. Number six, don't whistle and ever. Now, number five on my list is don't ever brag about your time or your bail or how little time you have or how shoddy the evidence is against you you have to understand that people on your block are looking at life are looking at football numbers and they just because they don't talk about it doesn't mean it's not affecting them and i have seen multiple times people bragging oh, i'm going home tomorrow bah! death hugs across the face or bah! uppercut to the chin or boop, 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 boop. even getting jumped man people don't want to hear it and another thing you could be bragging about your time and somebody could be plotting up behind you, plotting against you, trying to fuck that for you. Not so easy in provincial, but in the federal system, man, guys that brag about their time, all of a sudden they get random urinalysis. All of a sudden all these weird, strange things are said to Ipso. People are snaky. Nobody in jail or prison is your friend, really. You might be lucky and find one or two people that you consider your friend over the years of your time, but the best way is to just assume that you're alone and uh, just don't brag, man. You're going home. Just know to yourself and be happy to yourself that that is a reality for you. Even if you're doing six months or a year, this is considered short time and not worthy of bragging or even talking about. So just keep it to yourself. Be humble and understand that those who brag about those things typically come back to reap their reap what they sow. And I've seen it a lot of times. Guys get out. Ah, later, bitch. They get out. They think they're getting bail. Bail shot down. Wham, they're back there that night. And boom, they're checking off the block later on because of the violation things that they did. Maybe they flushed the toilet in the morning or at night just before thinking, ah, whatever, I'm getting out. You, you know, I'm, I'm sidetracking a bit, but just don't brag, okay? Number four on my list is always stand up for yourself. You know, uh, whether it's for your food or your respect, you have to stand up for yourself. Now, this doesn't mean you have to fire off on everybody that you feel is being slighting you a little bit. You also have to understand prison lingo. You have to understand where you're doing time and how people communicate with each other on that specific block. And you have to set a boundary of what you're prepared to accept or not accept. And you have to stick with that. Guys that get punked, get punked more than once. Guys that get boxed in their face, get boxed more than once. People are stressed, right? Everybody's fretting about their time, about their baby mom, who she's uh, hooking up with, whether it's uh, uh, Joey Grind or whatever. People are stressing. So anytime somebody can release a little bit of that stress, frustration, anger on somebody that they know is weaker and not prepared to stand up for themselves, believe me, there'll be a lot of people lining up to do that. There's tons of bullies inside, people that would never uh, be the top of the totem pole, but because they're not getting the respect that they feel they should from the big dogs, they're going to try and exact their revenge on the little dogs, the bullies. You see a lot less of this in the federal system 
because typically somebody will stand up for you if you're being bullied relentlessly for no reason. But in provincial, all is fair, man. It is what it is. So stand up for yourself, especially for your food. Uh, man, I, when I was in the dawn, it, guys would get punked off for their food, starting with like a jug up and then eventually... Uh, a dinner that's good and then every single dinner that's good they're getting swapped out for vegan meals and stuff and they don't know what to do because they allowed it to start i'm not telling you you got to go stab somebody or smash somebody if you don't voice it at the very least i want my shit then you're going to have problems for sure and a lot of the time when guys voice it they get it without having to fight sometimes they'll take from a lot of people understanding that a few people are going to voice it and speak up and that some aren't and uh, closed mouths don't get fed. So number four, always stand up for yourself no matter what. Now, number three on my list is just learn how to play cards. It's not easy to fit in when you're new on a block. And one easy way is by doing something like an activity. And if you can play cards, people may not even particularly like you, but they're going to want you to sit in to play cards. So uh, I'd say that's just an important thing. Learn how to play cards. It also will kill a shit ton of time like this. If you can play bridge or you can play bid whist, you, you'd be surprised. Like one game can be an hour, two hours, uh, especially if you're playing with people that are good. And uh, it really is a good time consumer. And like I said, it'll build bonds with you with guys uh, on the range. So Number three, learn how to play cards. Now, number two on my list is never trust anyone, ever. Always be aware. Now, this doesn't mean you can't have friends on the inside, that you can't make boys on your block. It just means be careful, be aware. We have intuition. You know that feeling you get in your gut when you know something's gonna go wrong? Listen to that. Prison or jail is not the place to eh, probably be all right. If your intuition is telling you something, follow it and be aware. Listen to the way people talk to you, to the things that they say. Listen to the way they talk about you to other people. Pay attention. Because sometimes guys can become victims and they have no idea. I've seen guys get attacked from behind, not a clue that it's coming. And because of that, they're super vulnerable and they get hurt. They're super vulnerable and they could get hurt. So uh, number, number two, never trust anybody ever. Always be aware. If you're lucky enough to make a friend in prison or jail, you will make that friend. And then you're lucky. But that's not typically the way that it goes. And number 12, or sorry, number one, the last and final rule in this list or tip, uh, which I'd say is in no particular order, to help people get through and do better time is for the first few days, shut up, be quiet, and observe. Listen. Understand the energy of the range. Try to figure out who's running things. Try to figure out um, what kind of things aren't accepted or will be punishable on that block. Understand just where you're living and be prepared and aware at all times. Now, just because I told you these things and these tips does not guarantee you're going to be okay. You know, you also have to act right. You also have to carry yourself like a man. And there's an energy that guys have that just makes time easier for them, man. Like, don't try to be so serious. Don't try to be so tough. Laugh. Joke. Don't stress too much. A stressed mind. People can feel that. You know, and uh, uh, in an anxious mind, people can feel that. People are like wolves on the inside, you know. Obviously, I share my stories with you guys, so you don't have to go through these things yourselves. If I could snap my finger like this, nobody gets knocked. Nobody gets locked up. Nobody's addicted. Nobody has these issues. That's what I do. 2022, though, that's not a reality. It's hard out here. You see how inflation's going. The cost of everything is increasing. Life is getting more and more difficult for the people on the bottom. And sometimes you got to do what you got to do. And what you got to do can land you in trouble. And these videos are there to help somebody prepare for themselves. Prepare themselves. Specifically this video. So 
Um, I appreciate you guys watching. If you could please hit the like button, subscribe button, and that bell notification button to get all my videos when they're new. If you could share with somebody on social media, help spread the message, help spread the word, that'd be amazing. And there's a PayPal option if you'd like to donate, help support the channel. The link is in the description of most of my videos. 12 tips. It is what it is. I can almost guarantee you follow those 12 tips and advice and you will most likely be okay. But one thing I forgot to say on there is just be yourself. Don't try to be something you're not. If you're the craziest, toughest goon, be yourself. If you're the biggest P word, pussy, wuss, who doesn't want to fight and is scared of fighting, be yourself. If you're that guy, don't go around telling people, I fight every day, this and that. Don't say that, because then when you when it comes your way, you'll be ex expected to answer the bell. But if you tell everybody from the start, man, I, I ain't a fighter, man. I, you know, I break the law, you know, I like, I like certain things that I get from it, but this is not really me, and chances are I'm probably not going to fight nobody unless, worst case scenario, I have to. And chances are, if then you get in a situation and you do back down from it, people aren't going to look at you like you're a goof because you didn't act a certain way. You understand what I'm saying? This list will help you if you follow it. Love each and every one of you at the new Mad Clark.